the most difficult but most important thing I learned as an ultra runner is how to fuel properly my run. You need to provide your body the energy, fluid and salt to keep performing at a high level and to keep performing on your long runs. But how do you fuel properly? You need to think about how much you need, what do you need and when you need it. So today I'm going to walk you through some basics on how to fuel properly your run so that you can perform on your long run and stay strong the whole day. Hi, my name is Simon, I'm an ultra runner, welcome to my channel where you can follow my journey as an ultra runner running 100 miler every month but also I'm making these videos to help you get out there and have, uh, well, have a good day. <laughs> so today we're discussing about nutrition and nutrition is one of the most important thing when it comes to ultra running but also one of the hardest thing to do properly. It takes years to master that. And it mirrors more than just one video, but today what we're focusing on is how to fuel your run. So we won't be discussing about what you should eat in recovery or your day-to-day -day life, but really how to fuel your race or fuel your training runs. More specifically, I'll try to both do simple advice that can help you fuel your run tomorrow, but also more advanced tips like how to think about a fueling strategy for your race or your long run and making a plan for that. But this is a little bit more advanced and I'll just brush it briefly so that you know that this is a thing and you can start working on it yourself. All right, so this is me editing the movie afterwards and I decided that I would also include some very specific guidance on how I think about nutrition myself for my run. So I'm gonna give you two very concrete examples of one a long run, how I'm fueling for that and also a 50K uh, ultra marathon, how I would think about making myself a pretty basic nutrition plan so that you can make your own. When it comes to fueling, there is no one size fits all. Everyone is different and even yourself, there will be variation between different runs on how your, your gut is doing and you will need to adapt. But the first thing that you need to do is that you need to train that. It's not just on race day that you should fuel your run, but also during training, your long run, make sure that you eat properly make sure that you drink properly first because it's going to help you have a better training run but also it's going to prepare you for race day when you go out longer you'll know what to do you'll know what to eat and you'll know how to stay strong on the long time so the first question you need to ask yourself is do you need to fuel yes or no and the big thing with that is that it will depend on your distance. The longer the distance, the more you will need to have this external source of energy because our body are carrying energy by themselves. You will never see a 100 meter sprinter eat in the middle of the run, that sounds stupid. And you will rarely see someone running a 100 mile without fueling. So the energy that you have stored is what you will use first. And the main source of energy for that is glycogen. Burning glycogen, that is stored in your liver and your muscle can sustain about 2000 calorie worth of effort and anything above that you will need to either supplement with something that you ate so for example some carbs that you absorb and is in your blood or by burning fat and we have a lot of fat and a lot of energy there but burning fat is not as fast as glycogen so there's a limited number of calories that you can get from burning fat per hour and that would not sustain you running at full pace. And the, the rule of thumb that you can use usually is that since we have about 2000 calories of glycogen and we burn about 100 calories per mile, that means around 20 miles you're gonna struggle if you have not been eating properly. And for anyone who's done a marathon, that's the wall that people face at 18, 20 miles. That's very often due to improper fueling. So if you don't wanna face the wall, you gotta practice fueling. But for anything that is lower than that in mileage, you don't absolutely need to fuel. But it's a good idea to practice during your training. So personally, if I go for any run in training that is half marathon or more, I'll eat something. And if not, I'll just skip it. But now that you know if you need to fuel, then the follow-up question is, well, why not fuel? If you go for a six mile run, why not eat something? Well, the first one is, is for me, it's, it's just simplicity. If I go for a six mile run, I might not want to bother carrying anything with me, including gel. The other association to that is that I might not want to spend money on gel and would rather eat food afterwards. And the last reason is really, 
We often think about fueling as soon as you put it in your mouth, somehow it's magically in your blood. Uh, I can tell you as someone who studies biology, that's really not how it works. There's a delay between swallowing something and it's actually available to your muscle. So if you go for like a three miles run, it's taking you 30 minutes. The reality is whatever you ate during that run will not be available to your muscle by the time you're actually done. So it's kind of pointless. Now, it's a good thing to practice eating, but you won't necessarily need it and you could skip it on these shorter run. Now that you know that you need to fuel your run, then the big question that you need to answer is how much? Because there's no point eating too much and if you don't eat enough, then you're kind of breaking the purpose of fueling a little bit. But how do you know how much is enough? And that's really the first step of making any nutrition strategy for a race or for a long run is how much do you think you will need for that? And you can use the rule of thumb that's gonna help you, which is, again, you have, let's say 2000 calories worth of energy stored, and that would be the max. You don't wanna actually burn the whole thing. So put maybe 1500 calories, and if you go for a 20 mile run to make sure that 20 mile times 100 is 2,000 calorie. You have 500 calories that you should try and eat so that you won't be burned out by the end of the run. And then you can divide that. Well, 500 calories, I have about three hours, three hours and a half. That's about five gels. So then you can think, okay, well, maybe I take a gel every 30 minutes. And that's just how you're going to be able to spread what you need but also make sure that you go at the rhythm that you're able to sustain as opposed to you take the five gel all at once and then you eat it all at once <laughs> and then it's coming out uh, if you have a plan even if it's a high level plan like this that's gonna be great because first you know to carry five gels with you you know maybe to set an alarm on your clock at every 30 minutes you should be having that hundred calorie and these little steps knowing how much you need to eat is really the first step towards a more complex nutrition strategy that will help you bring you to the finish line. Before we dive into the what I eat on a run, if you enjoyed this video, if you think it's helpful, please leave a like, that's helping me a lot, or let me know in the comments if you appreciate, uh, that, that means the world to me. So thanks for watching and let's dive into the next question is, what should you eat specifically? So we're already going to the first concrete example of how I think about nutrition. This one is for a long run. All right, we're going on an 18 mile long run, zone two with Nara, and I'll show you what she's having and what I'm not having. So Nara, what are you having on this run? Um, I am having a 500 ml of water and another bottle that is 500 ml of water plus tailwind, which is about 200 calories. All right, for me, I'm gonna have a full bottle of water, a full bottle of a half pack tailwind, and two goo gels. But how did I find these numbers? Let's go to the lab upstairs and figure that out. So the first thing I do when I have a run like that is first I'm asking myself, do I need to fuel 18 miles? Yes, it's a little bit too close to that 2000 calories. So I'll want to fuel a little bit. So I look at the distance that I'm doing, 18 miles, what is the amount of time that I think I'm gonna take for that? And we're looking at the zone two workout, we're gonna try to go pretty slow, and there's a fair amount of hill I'm thinking that for this uh, course, is gonna be about 1500 feet of gain. So 18 miles for me will be about three hours. Then I'm gonna estimate the amount of calories I actually need for this run. It's 18 miles, so let's just call that 1800. And before actually thinking about what I wanna eat, I need to think, will I need to drink for this one? It's gonna be three hours. I live in Southern California. So I'm thinking that I'm gonna need about one liter of fluid. I don't have any math for that. This is just experience. If I had eight station, I would probably be closer to a 1.5 liter, but I don't wanna carry so much. So I'm gonna bring one liter of fluids because I need 1800 calories and Again, these are just estimate, but let's say I, I will use about 1500 calories from glycogen, then I need to have at least 300 calories worth of nutrition. Mostly carbs, there's really no reason to not go with carbs on a run that is this distance. So because I'm bringing fluid, I, what I like to do is having one bottle of water, so 500 ml, which gives me 500 ml that I can use for calories. Tailwind, uh, the way I would dilute it for that would be about 100 calorie for this, so now I only have 200 calories that I need to supplement. The easiest and simplest is to take some gels. It's gonna be two gels for me. 
And because we're running for three hours, I'm gonna take a gel at one hour and a gel at two hour, more or less. And I'm also gonna have a little something before the run just to feel a little bit better. I'm gonna have some bread, some butter and some bananas. It's that simple. Obviously how you feel the, the calories is based on what you prefer and what you tolerate and that's what we're gonna discuss right now. I gotta go see if I find my guy's table down there. And what you should use is what you can eat. <laughs> <laughs> it's as simple as that, but we can dive a little more specific, but I'm gonna suggest things that work for me But if you get sick from that, then obviously that's a bad choice So you'll need to try them and that comes from training with specific ideas But personally, I think what works very well, especially for anything that is below a 50 mile for me is anything that is uh, carb based because this is something that is absorbed very quickly and it's energy that is readily available and good source of that that are practical on a run would be gels for example I think they can be great you need to try different brands they have different texture different flavor uh, but usually they have a hundred so it's also easy for the mat and it's very small so it's easy to carry on your vest and then you say well I need 500 calories here are five gels so try different brand try different uh, flavor and I think one of the biggest stupidest mistake one can do is you try a flavor you really like it a lot and you buy a big box of only that flavor uh, you're not gonna like it at some point and just the thought of that flavor will make you wanna puke so it's good to have kind of different flavor and to switch it up a little bit so for me gel is the big one uh, there's a limit of how many gel you can take before being actually sick uh, which is often just associated to the quantity of sugar but when you take a gel make sure to drink a lot with it um, that's true for basically any food but for gel specifically it's so concentrated that it can create nausea or it could lead to diarrhea if you don't drink enough uh, water or it could be electrolyte uh, the second thing is that it's good to drink anyway in general uh, but it's also gonna make absorption much easier so drink every time you have a gel drink but it's usually easy to remember because sometimes it leaves a taste on your mouth that isn't super pleasant so washing it down will help a lot here the other one that I like a lot are gummies in general um, gummies depends for me on the temperature if it's too cold they get really hard and difficult to chew if it's too hot they're almost melted which is kind of weird so there's a right temperature where gummies are just good and it's easier to just have one at the time so gummies is a great source the other one great source I think for me is anything that is liquid so something like Tailwind or any of these electrolyte mix are actually great because you're gonna hit on the three big things that you're trying to supplement which is you have calories in there so I think the one with calories obviously you have salt and you have liquids and the fact that your calories are from drinking it will force you to stay hydrated now it doesn't mean that you have enough calories in there or salt or liquid so you might still need to drink water you might still need to take salt pills and you might still need to take more food but I think it's helping in all three categories so this is my go-to on every race and every training run if I can I will have an electrolyte drink like Tailwind they said that they didn't have good gel so you just need to take a pickle and a gummy bear and it's the same Okay, let's go into the second example of a nutrition plan, a very concrete example. I'm thinking of a race that I did a few years ago. It was a 50K with a fair amount of elevation gain. So first thing I do is, okay, what's the distance? 50K, let's translate that to miles because I live in the US, it's about 31 miles. And for a 50K like that, my estimated finish time will be around six hours. So I have six hours of time and I was a fair amount of elevation gain. So when I'm estimating how many calories I'm actually gonna need throughout this exercise, it would be 3,100 calories just based on the distance, but I've added 200 calories. Uh, it's just, a, it, it's absolutely not accurate, but it's just for me to have more than the, the bare minimum here. So I'm looking at 3,300 calories that I need to use during this race. And based on where it is, I know that I'm going to be drinking between 500 ml to one liter every hour. So let's be on the conservative side and say that I'm only going to drink one bottle. So 500 ml 
every hour. Something that has calories, which very often it will be about 100 calories or more. Just to be conservative here, I'm gonna assume that I'm gonna drink 100 calories per hour for six hours, so that's 600 calories. We had the 1500 from glycogen, so we're already at math. <laughs> we're already at 2100, which means the 3300 that we had told that I need minus the 1500 from glycogen minus what I estimate from drinking, I still need to cover for about 1200. So 1200, the easy math here would be 12 gels. And if we think about the plan again, 12 gels, six hours, we're kind of lucky here, but it's gonna be a gel every 30 minutes, which is a plan that is simple and simple to follow. If they don't have gels at aid station, I'm gonna try and take something that is the equivalent of 100 calories per hour. And I think you can probably already see it for my training run of 80 miles, I was only taking a gel every hour, whereas for a 50K, I'm already eating twice as much in terms of calorie consumption. The longer you go, the harder it is to actually do that. I know what my tolerance is, and I know that one gel every 30 minutes is something that I can manage for that amount of time, but you already need to be a little bit more wary about things not going according to plan. And one could be that they don't have gels, but one could be that you're getting a little bit sick. So when you look at your plan, try to make it as simple as possible so that you can remember. It is very easy to remember eating a gel every 30 minutes. The second one is be open to changing it on the fly. And the third is just look at it and is it realistic? If your math suggests that you should be having a gel every five minutes, that's not something you can do. You need to, to <laughs> rethink your life a little bit here. Now, a 50K fueling strategy, I think is extremely important for you to be successful in your 50K. If we go to longer distance, it gets a little bit more complex and I might make a video in the future on how to think about these more complex fueling strategy, how to adapt during your race. But for your first 50K, make yourself a plan like that and look at it. It's, wow, okay, I need to have a gel every 30 minutes. During your training run, your 18 mile training run that we did before, I fueled because that's the amount that I needed. But if you're training for your 50K, how about practicing that? How about practicing having a gel every 30 minutes and that 500 ml of tailwind? Are you able to sustain that? And you will improve in your ability to actually digest this sugar, but just being able to do it in training will help you see if your plan that you have on paper is something that you can actually bring on trails. But, and I said it, after a certain time, your tummy will hurt. So you, you have a limit of how much sugar you can take before being sick. And you, I, I think it's good to test. I could say numbers here in terms of gram. You, you can Google it. I just don't want to mislead people uh, and then you're sick because of me. So I'm just not going to say number. But personally, I will rarely have more than two or three gel per hour. Otherwise, I'll be terribly sick. But even if you dilute that properly, there's, I think... And I've never necessarily read that directly, but I think there's some level of fatigue with carbs that at some point when you're 10 hours within a race, that's just, mm -mm, mm -mm, can't do it anymore. And then you need to switch different kind of food. And you could try to do that earlier in a race, but in a training run, usually if you do 20 miles, you, you won't reach that point. But just so you know, on race day, it might happen that you can't have sugar anymore. You just feel it. Switch to anything else. <laughs> Your plan is just gun down the trash that's okay you still need the calories so try some chips try something salty fatty solid um you, it will never happen for me in a training run but on a race it can happen fairly early so that's something to be aware of the last thing is that when you go either for a training run or a race we think a lot about what do you eat from the time you started running to finishing running and i won't talk about recovery food but as i mentioned before food is not directly going into your bloodstream. So what you eat before you start the race actually matters a lot. And personally, what I like, even on a training run, even if it's just a three mile, I like to have something solid. Uh, an example that I, I think is a go-to for me would be a bagel with peanut butter and banana. And you have basically all food groups in there. You have complex carb from the bread. You, you have banana, which is more um, immediate energy. And then you have some fat slash protein with the peanut butter. So it's, it's kind of touching everything and that just having food in my stomach 
will reduce nausea and, nausea in general. So a pre-run meal is something pretty important. There's different things you can try. I think a lot of people like oatmeal also. So just this kind of go-to food actually goes into your fueling strategy. You need to count these calories because you're actually going to burn these calories and it's a good timing just before you run or maybe maybe more like 30 minutes before you run uh, to do that. However, don't do that the first time on race day. So <laughs> do it in training. What's your little breakfast that you can have? You can even have coffee. I have coffee before a lot of my run. Coffee is not a source of energy though, so don't get fooled with that. It will get you awake, but it won't actually help you get to the finish line. But the great advantage with coffee is that it's gonna help you uh, clean the pipes. And so at the high level, that's the strategy is, do you need to eat, yes or no, how much do you need, and make yourself a high level plan of this is how many calories I need to have, therefore I need to eat that much per hour or per mile. And you can put the reminder on your watch, a little beep, that it's been 20 minutes, you need to drink something or you need to eat something. Even the best plan uh, is just a guidance, similar to the training schedule we built together. That's what you would hope you can do and that's how you should start the race, but then you will need to adjust during the race or during your training run and just testing things out a little bit. Because what can go wrong, The I think there's, well, there's three main things that can go wrong. And here are the fix. The first one is that you actually don't eat enough. And that's probably the worst thing because you don't get what you need and you're gonna get pooped out very quickly. But the two more common ones would be GI issues. So one is either you have nausea, you feel like puking, or you puke. <laughs> uh, which obviously, if you do end up puking, uh, you just lost everything you ate and all of the fluid. So that's a very negative situation. You'll feel great for a little bit. But the biggest trap here is that you're feeling good, you rinse it up with water and you just keep going. You're feeling so much fresher now. That's fine, but that's a ticking time bomb. So the fix to that is understanding, yes, I had nausea, I was sick or I was almost sick, what should I do? You should probably, one, slow down and make sure that you eat. The other thing that can happen is that it's coming out of the other direction. And that one is an easier fix. Um, first, it's realizing that most likely it's a mix of having too much sugar uh, and too much liquid and basically what's happening is your body is not able to absorb it quickly enough and your microflora, your gut microflora is having a huge party because you just gave them a lot of sugar and they really like that and they're very excited and your body doesn't like that so it just, it brings it out. Um, First is to fix what you're eating. You should still eat, but try and go with something that is a little bit more solid. Uh, what I think is very helpful for me is things like rice, for example, bread. Uh, so these more complex carb will help kind of slow things down. But if it's really happening... Okay, can somebody give me some paper towels? Or maybe... A <laughs> Emodium is a quick fix. It will kind of block you. And that's it, folks high level tips on how to fuel your run which is first be aware that it's extremely important have some high level plan of do you need to eat and practice that in training practice 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 you don't want to be sick on race day you want to be sick in training well you, you also don't want to be sick in training but if you're going to be sick be sick in training so that on race day you just you eat properly the whole way and you'll finish strong all of my race that i finished strong i was eating properly all of my race that I did not finish strong, I was not eating properly. And that's the thing, I know it's important, I have experience, and I have solutions that have worked, but even though I know that, sometimes it won't happen. And that's where training and practice will really help you save your race, will really help you know what you need to perform and stay, stay strong, but also know how to adapt to problems. I hope these tips were helpful. If they were helpful, please leave a like in the comments below. What do you think about this, this fueling strategy? Do you have any tips for other people? So let us know in the comments below and see you next time.